funny thing is they sweep across the desert, and where do we go back to your aerial? Uh huh. It's up. What they do is they sweep all the way across. I don't know how good your aerial is, but the Great Pyramid is 756 feet on each side in, in side length. Right. And if you'll notice, on the lower east side, there are three holes. There are three oblong holes. Can you see those in a T-shape? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. That's what the, you know, those holes, e- each one of those holes is probably the, the length of two double two mobile homes. You could probably put two double-wide mobile homes in, in each one of those holes end-to-end, drop them in there, and you would not see anything above ground. That's wow. how big those holes are. Wow. Uniquely, the pads you're looking at, they sweep from across from the, from the lower right of the, of the uh, photo, which is uh, the east side. They sweep across the desert, and they converge, coming into the T, to the mid-side, mid-east side of the Great Pyramid. Sweep across the desert, coming in from the east. They they miss those three oblong holes that anyone in, uh, can go to Google and see those. And they sweep and they converge right at a place. And I got to look and I said, if you move rocks in from the east, if you moved enough of them, you would have a, a a hill, not a not a hole. Why would you have a hole? Do you have the the cavity? Okay, well, well it, it's uh, it's available on site. As a matter of fact, we, we and to me, I found this this amazing because when they converge, they converge at a large square, very very deep hole on the mid body east side. It's like it looks like a point of light, possibly on the 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 aerial image. Do you see that? I think I know what you mean. Okay, there there's um the, right on the mid body side. There's there's a, a small square hole on mine. It's small enough. It looks like it's just a little dot. Right. There's a little square hole. Okay. Um, okay. Go ahead and shift now to the picture of the wooden cavity. All right. These multiple paths sweep across the desert, coming in from the east. They they miss those three oblong holes that anyone in, uh, can go to Google and see those. And they sweep and they converge right at a place. And I got to look and I said, if you move rocks in from the east, if you moved enough of them, you would have a... A hill, right? Not a not a hole. Difficulties here. Okay, well, it, it, it's uh, it's available on site. As a matter of fact, yeah. we we SolomonSeries.com. Let me just throw that out there for you, so that people know it's uh, sol. There you go. Okay, the SolomonSeries.com is where you want to be looking for Ted's information. Okay, we now have the the wooden cavity up there. Okay, the the pass we just showed you sweep from a, from the eastern side of the the, the eastern face of the Great Pyramid from a, a hole in the ground, basically sweep across the desert. And they all converge at this hole, which is a rather deep hole. And if you go to, like, Google Earth, or you go get one of our drawings, and we explain everything in the drawing, and then you can go to Google Earth and get your own once you've been walked through it. The wall, the bulkhead shown in the bottom of that hole is large. The hole is large enough you can see it from satellite imagery. Wow. And the wall itself is. And as we stood there looking at the hole, we realized... The only thing harder than making a large, square, deep, vertical hole in the desert in this type of terrain would be to make it and then leave a wall in the middle. Right. I mean, you know, you know, make it a big hole once you cut out the, the edges, you know, then you just swing a big hammer or, you know, do whatever you need to do to break the stone out. That's one thing. But then when you get down and say, fellas, I want a perfectly square wall in the bottom of my hole. <laughs> I was thinking there's something significant here. We have missed something major. Yeah. We, you know, uh, you know, for for some reason, no one's told us about the northeast corner being natural, the southwest corner just off from it being natural, 
They've never eliminated three approach paths. They've never showed us the east side approach path and these little flip-flop tools with rocks sitting between them. And I'm going, what have we missed here? Because they all converged, had a big hole on the mid-east side. Intriguing. No one had claimed it, so I put my name on it. Yeah, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. The unique thing is, as you examine the wall, the wall in the middle, I mean, the hole is phenomenal. It's about 30 by 30 squares, probably 60, 70 feet deep. And I'm like going, someone went to a, a big problem for this. Yeah. To put this in. As I examined the wall from up above, I realized down at the bottom of the hole, there's actually a hole, a large hole, um, probably two foot around, I mean, that penetrates the wall. Not only did they build a wall, they knocked a hole in the wall. And then when we, as we were doing our study, we realized this was built for a purpose. And it's absolutely astounding when you look at it. So is this going along lines with your perpetual motion device? This, that we, what we did, we did find a, a, a repeat design. This, the design where we show you with the Widden cavity is replicated at least five times in the structure itself. So we, we, once we identified the structure and what it does, we realized this is no coincidence. So you mean these are inside the pyramid, are you saying? There, there are structures within the pyramid that once you understand what it does physically, mechanically, there are more than one. Huh. The, Yeah.